Greetings, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again, and learning on these important topics of our Rosicrucian studies. Our presentation today is entitled The Rise of the Master Within. Now, the concept of the master within or the divine within is central to the Rosicrucian way of life, which is unique yet universal for each student. And to prepare ourselves for this presentation, as is our practice, we'll have a particular slide that'll help us enter into meditation and have an experience of the master within. And then we'll have our discussion and presentation on the master within. Okay, so get, get ready for meditation. You may wish to sit comfortably in your chair and I'll guide you shortly more. Now the particular artwork that you are seeing now is by Ernst Fuchs. It's entitled Moses Before the Burning Bush. It's tempera on wood panel. It was executed in 1956 to 1957. It's a relatively small work. It's about 18 and a half centimeters high by 23.2 centimeters uh, wide. It's a very suggestive work of the master within and the divine within or the inner self. We see Moses on the right kneeling before the burning bush appearing as the Lord or the, or the embodiment of the divine. Very subtly placed into the painting, you'll notice a face that almost looks like the, the Buddha or suggestive of the avatar, Christ consciousness. But you can also see that as our divine within or suggestive of it. You'll see the landscape associated around that, that biblical place and the wonderful warm colors of light and rays that are coming down, suggestive of that divine force within us. Take in the work and it's in a way, the artist had an inspiring experience of the divine. In a way, if we follow the painting, just like being uh, two, tuning forks beside each other, the same pitch as we look at the painting as a, like one tuning fork vibrating, we ourselves as the other tuning fork start to vibrate and go more deeply into the understanding of this, this wonderful work. It's very suggestive with all sorts of different details. But bear it in mind in a way the face gives us a sense that back of all of our experience in our life is the divine within, the master within, not only helping us understand stand, but also fully conceive things. The outer self gives information, perceives and gives information to the inner self. The inner self then helps us to understand and comprehend more fully, just like suggested by this uh, figure that's uh, subtly behind the figure of Moses. Just enjoy the painting as we start to begin our meditation. At this point, I suggest you close your eyes. And if you're seated, make sure you're comfortable and have your feet flat on the floor, palms in your laps, pointing down or face down, legs at right angles at the knees, the feet flat on the floor, the holy body of the temple communicates with the temple of the earth that we're well grounded. Spine upright, if you're in a seated position. Most important is whether you're lying down or, or seated, is that you can breathe in an unencumbered fashion because we'll make special use of our breath during our meditation period. Just take some deep neutral breaths neither holding the inhalation nor holding the exhalation. Just enjoy the gentle rhythm of the breath. I encourage you too to uh, 
have your exhalation a little bit longer or longer than the inhalation. That'll help activate the vagus nerve and the relaxation response, which allows us to heal, to be made whole. With that exhalation, there's an automatic relaxation response. Even if we're feeling a little stressed, even if we've been a little bit roughed up today and use this period of meditation to be soothed. Just use it as some time too, to just check in with yourself. How are you feeling? Just accept whatever's going on. And just continue to take the deep neutral breaths. With the inhalation, you can feel the increased charge of the vital life force, particularly its positive polarity, the cosmic essence. And with each exhalation, that increased relaxation response, increased activation of the vagus nerve, running from the lower brain all the way down to below the gut, important line of communication in our body and in our mind. get over our overall assessment of situations and work with the master within. If you find your mind wandering, just lovingly and gently bring it back to the gentle rhythm of the breath. This is one form of meditation and a very enriching one. Part of the mastership of life is the mastery of our breath. Focusing on the breath places us in the present. Yes, we can plan there for the future. We can also reflect and learn from the past. But with the concentration on the breath, the mind gets centered very mindfully. Not regretting what happened in the past, not getting undue anxiety about the future, just being fully present. And this breathing also helps activate all the faculties of the mind and body. So we can more easily accomplish what may have seemed challenging before, especially when the master within starts to declare itself and give its guidance. All these systems within our mind and body and deeper all work in a harmonious way for our harmonium on all levels. Keep your focus on the gentle rhythm of the breath. I think you'll find with each inhalation, as we spiritualize this process, we'll feel more and more of the presence of the divine within, the master within declaring itself within us. This is a wonderful experience and a ennobling experience. It sets us on our course aright. And with each exhalation, we feel that increased relaxation response, that increased calmness and tranquility which just makes us all the more receptive to our true nature, the master within. Now we'll continue this meditation, but we'll use a slightly different form of meditation now, but we'll continue our breathing. We're gonna have a period of cosmic attunement with the celestial sanctum. We've applied the law of duality and law of polarity in our inhalations and exhalations to draw us towards the application of the law of unity. We'll extend this even further through the application of laws of cosmic attunement as we ascend to the heights of a celestial sanctum, 
following the booklet, Lieber 777, which will give you the resource after the presentation. We may wish to review it if you're familiar with it already. For as we grow and learn, its contents expand in our mind and appreciation of what's being stated in it. And learn all the more how to apply its instructions. Now to begin our ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum, let us do together a prayer and invocation. Imply the law of purification. May the divine essence of the cosmic infuse my being and cleanse me of all impurities of mind and body that I may enter the celestial sanctum and in turn attune in pureness and in worthiness. So mote it be. Now let us begin our ascent to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Use your imagination and your inner psychic faculties to picture yourself rising up over the room where you're situated over the house and home where you are, and even the neighborhood, starting to go faster and faster, enjoying the exhilaration of the ascent. Use, use great inner spiritual force in this ascent. We'll surrender and be passive when we reach the heights of the celestial sanctum and look down on your neighborhood and see the system and order of the streets, geographic forms, and rise up over the geographic location you are, maybe a city or a town. See its wonderful structure and layout in the buildings, special works of architecture, and keep rising up faster and faster. And see below you now the state or the province where you dwell. And keep going up faster and faster and see now the great nation or country you dwell. See below you the various landforms. There's deserts or hills or mountains, woods, fields, farm areas, lakes, rivers, oceans, lakeshore or seashore, various weather systems below. Keep rising up and sense even more the great system and order of the temple of the earth. See now the continent where you live, and now the hemisphere, and now the entire be beautiful blue jewel of the earth. Sense the great rotations of the earth around its axis from the North Pole to the South Pole. And see the great weather, weather systems, some spiraling. See the great land forms of the continents, but also the oceans. Keep rising up and see the moon revolving ab about the earth and sense the great rotations of the earth. And look up and see the solar system that we're part of and the great fiery ball of the sun and the huge planet of Jupiter and the beautiful rings of Saturn and the smaller planets such as Mercury and Mars and Venus and sense their beauty of their elliptical orbits. And see in some of the planets, they have moons revolving about them. Just as the planets and the earth revolve about the sun, our local star. And now look up and go faster and faster, way beyond the speed of light as we transcend space and time. We're not limited by the physical limitations of the speed of light and sense other myriad stars, pulsars and the quasars, interstellar gases, comets, the rogue planets. The black holes helping keep our universe in balance. Can you rise up past many, many stars nebulae and start to sense the large scale structure of our galaxy, the Milky Way galaxy and its great spiraling form. 
keep going faster and faster, way beyond the speed of light, enjoying the exhilaration of the ascent and sense the great sea of vibrations that we're in, the Rosicrucians refer to it through the cosmic keyboard, the higher and higher octaves of vibration. Sense them not only with your outer senses, but also the psychic senses taking in the entirety of the cosmic keyboard and sense it as a great army of the spheres spoken by the ancient mystics. A beautiful music of the cosmos, a wonderful system and order and coherence and resonance. And let us rise up faster and faster, passing right out of the Milky Way galaxy and look back at its wondrous spiraling form and then look up and see other galaxies, some spiraling in some other forms, some connected to our galaxy by interstellar web, the myriad star formations, interstellar gases, supernovae, their tremendous bursts of light, suggestive of the great inner spiritual forces within us through the divine within, when we surrender in all humility and keep rising up the many galaxies and planets and nebulae and see how the galaxies are formed within large clusters of galaxies and those galaxies rotate about the great axis of the cluster. And as you go faster and faster, see many, many clusters of galaxies that are all within one supercluster, as referred to by astrophysicists and astronomers, and pass right out of our supercluster of galaxies and start to sense many more stars again and galaxies and clusters of galaxies and even many superclusters of galaxies, all revolving about one great cosmic axis spoken of since ancient times by mystics and philosophers. Start to sense as you go faster and faster the great revolving action of the cosmos, to the stupendous harmony and order, the great music of the divine. And as we rise up higher and higher, straight up all the way up, by the law of correspondence, we go deeper and deeper within ourselves in contact with the master within, the divine within. And in this fashion, we sense the presence of the divine throughout the cosmos as a living being of which we are one with. We sense the cosmic, that is the consciousness back of the cosmos, the universal intelligence back of the cosmos and all natural and spiritual laws that wondrously at work. Going fully to the master within as we are increasingly guided by it. We come to know these laws and principles through our Rosicrucian studies. <clears throat> now come closer and closer to that great cosmic axis and home in right on its midpoint. As you come to that midpoint, you can slow up and dwell there for a moment to take in the expansive, inspiring view of the cosmos. We're at the very center of the cosmos, at the center of our being. And let us apply now the instructions further of the booklet, Libra 777. By picturing our own personal celestial sanctum. It may be an inspiring place in nature, such as the view of the cosmos all around you, or some inspiring scene that you recall from back on earth, maybe a sacred grove of trees, or by a seashore and seeing the waves lap in, reminding you the great vibrations of the cosmic keyboard, or similarly by a seashore, or in a high hill or mountaintop, with an expansive view suggestive of the cosmic and its expansive understanding and view. Or some other wonderful scene in nature. Or you may wish to picture some man or human built 
sacred structure like a Sikh Gadara or a Buddhist prayer hall or stupa or a Jewish synagogue or a Hindu mandir or a Christian cathedral, church or basilica or the grand temple of the Rosicrucian Order of Amorc at Rosicrucian Park in San Jose, California. Fill in the sights and sounds and the smells of your celestial sanctum. Make it real, make it vital. Feel the exhilaration at being in your celestial sanctum at the center of the cosmos. You may wish to sense their beautiful aroma of incense rising up, suggesting our raising of vibrations and raising our consciousness as we came to the heights of the celestial sanctum. Maybe beautiful symbols such as stained glass windows depicting Rosicrucian laws and principles for our mastery of our living. You can picture there too all those seekers on this conference call and all aspirants and visible invisible masters, the grand masters of our order, and possibly the imperator of our order conducting a sacred convocation with the grand masters. Continue to fill in the sights and sounds. Make it real, make it vital as a visualization. Enjoy the process, feel the exhilaration being at the center of your being in the presence of the divine within. And once you've filled in your visualization, of your celestial sanctum, just release it and let it go and dwell in stillness in the presence of the master within. If it helps, can just continue to concentrate on the breath increasingly experience this deep stillness, what Rosicrucians refer to as peace profound, the most profound experience of peace. Let us apply the law of silence now, the law of cosmic attunement. If there's any impressions that wish to be come forward from the master within this time, just dwell in this period for general enlightenment, Just feel whatever there is to feel. <clears throat> Meditation is a profound act of non-avoidance. Any impressions come to the mind, just come back lovingly and gently to the breath and the deep stillness, the center of your being. Meditation is a profoundly enjoyable act, it's something that we can look forward to each day and know that is needed to properly discharge our duties and fulfill our mission in life through the guidance of the master within our true nature. Enjoy this period of healing and making whole. 
increasingly identifying ourselves with our true nature, the master within. As we continue this meditation, the heights of the celestial sanctum, let us carry out further operations of a spiritual nature of the Rosicrucian Order Amorc by applying the law of service and the law of love. Let us radiate love and well being to all those who have petitioned the Council of Solace the, of our Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order. Those persons petition for health and guidance. And all those who have petitioned affiliate bodies that you may attend at the Rosicrucian Order Amorc for their metaphysical aid lists. Radiate love and well being to those persons who have petitioned for healing and guidance. And all those you know who are in need of healing and guidance. And all sentient beings throughout the cosmos who are in need of healing. Radiate love and well-being out to them now. The master within, the divine within, will respond to this noble act of service. Just like you use great inner spiritual force to rise up into the cosmic, use great spiritual force now to get the love and well-being flowing out from you. The outer self is but a channel. It's not doing this. So we increasingly surrender the divine within, the force of the love and well-being will increase, radiate out from us like a great floodlight to all those in need. Let it flow out. Water flowing out from a fire hydrant, just let it flow out to all those in need, for the need is great. Let us do this as part of our mission in life. As the love and well-being flows out, the master within will increasingly declare its presence. Just let it happen. The outer self surrenders. At a certain point, too, I think you won't have to make any conscious effort for the love and well being and the healing forces to flow. At a certain point, I think they'll even speed up and you'll know that you're reaching those in need. And once you no longer need to make any conscious effort for the love and well being to flow, just continue to dwell in the deep stillness and the presence of the Master within. Soon we'll conclude this period of sending a metaphysical aid as a silent council in conjunction with the Council of Solace of our Grand Lodge of the Rosicrucian Order and Mark. But we'll continue our meditation, but to formally conclude this work of the silent council, let us say together, if it pleases the cosmic, it is done, so mote it be. Now let us dwell for a while longer at the heights of the celestial sanctum in the presence of the divine within. Feeling our oneness with the cosmic mind. Feeling the great unity.
Soon we'll conclude formally our period of meditation and the sending of metaphysical aid. Assured that this presence of the master within, cosmic consciousness, using our being and all our forms of consciousness, will continue to enrich us, ennoble us, heal us. And the forces of love and well-being will continue to flow to all in need as a way of life. As students on the mystical path. Let us invoke now the law of gratitude for this opportunity to be of service. And gratitude for all those who have guided us well. And all who those who have loved us and sacrificed in a good way for us. Radiate love and well-being to them now. And let us begin our descent from the heights of the celestial sanctum. Moving at great speed beyond the, past the superclusters of galaxies and the myriad stars and stellar phenomena like the pulsars and the quasars and the black holes balancing the universe and the nebulae. Past myriad superclusters and then finally see in the distance the supercluster where we dwell and enter into it and sense the clusters within it revolving about that supercluster's axis. As we move faster and faster, see in the distance the, the cluster where we dwell and enter into it and marvel at the myriad galaxies and huge numbers of stars and the great webs connecting the galaxies and see in the distance the Milky Way galaxy and its wonderful spiral in form. As you come closer and closer, this Milky Way galaxy sense the music, the harmony of the spheres and enter into the Milky Way galaxy and past the myriad stars, the stellar phenomena, planets and comets and rogue planets and see in the distance our solar system. And the beautiful fiery ball of the sun, and the beautiful blue jewel of the earth, the temple of the earth, and home in on the earth, our home. And see this hemisphere where you dwell, and then the continent, and the great city or nation you dwell, and the province or state where you live and then the city or geographic area where your home is on earth. And let us say together again, a prayer and invocation. May the God of my heart sanctify this attunement of self with the celestial sanctum, so mote it be. And let us continue down to our neighborhood, our house and home where we left off, back in the room where we are, seated in our chair or lying down however we're situated. And when we're ready, you may wish to stretch and open your eyes. Rebuilt, rejuvenated, remade, all the more ready for the work and worship of the Rosicrucian Order this day and discharging our duties on the mystical path. Thank you so much. Great. Now, by way of introduction on the concept of the master within, which is central to the Rosicrucian studies and to life, the master within is the inner self. The conscience is the master's within's voice. The soul force brings into our being a divine intelligence. This intelligence is our personal master. It is the spiritual consciousness that the Rosicrucian glossary and dictionary tells us. The spiritual consciousness within the physical human body. It has its own immaterial faculties and functionings. It constitutes a separate form from the physical form in which it temporarily resides. 
This consciousness constitutes our real being. It is part of the soul or divine element in our existence. Matter and the divine consciousness in the human constitutes two different realities working in harmonious parallel, but they are both part of the same cosmic whole, which we experience during our, our ascent to the height, to the celestial sanctum. The outer self with its material and physical consciousness is limited in nature and quality of contact it can make. The inner self, on the other hand, the spiritual consciousness is unlimited and in no way restricted by time and space or by the nature and quality of material things. You'll see here before you now a special picture entitled The Neophyte in Their Sanctum. It was in the Rosicrucian Digest in January 1941. And we'll see here a student in their home sanctum, candles lit, rosy cross before them, attuning with the cosmic, increasingly sensing the presence of the master within, which is symbolically shown by a master figure behind with a hand to do a benediction, to granting the presence of the master within to be all the more realized in the cosmic attunement to take place during our period of meditation. Now the mass within is distinct from the soul personality. The soul personality evolves and matures like a mirror being polished. As we work with the master within and follow its guidance and thereby increasingly we can re-reflect the divine. The soul personality is the image and the soul is the object. Now, spiritual traditions of the world have various terms for what is essentially the master within. Examples of this are, for example, the inner light or the inward light spoken of in the Quaker tradition, which itself was greatly influenced by the Rosicrucians. The indwelling Christ or the Christ principle in mystical forms of Christianity. The Atman in Hinduism. Or another example is our faithful guide as spoken of by the August master, Louis Claude de Saint Martin. We see here another depiction of the master within and the outer self. It appeared on the front cover of the Rosicrucian Digest in January 1984. It's by the Rosicrucian artist Leopold de Postels, entitled Aspiration. We see in this close up the figure here, the great radiant light from the divine within, the master within. The seeker who has climbed the mountain to the mountaintop, symbolically for that higher view, is akin to what we did when we ascended to the heights of the celestial sanctum. And you may have pictured yourself in your personal selection at a high, high vantage point to give that cosmic perspective. You know, it's tremendously inspiring conception and experience for us as adults but also for children to be taught and to be introduced to and to know that we all have a master within or inner self, and that is our true nature and guide in living. Now we'll go over a series of questions on this topic before we conclude. It may be asked, what are the different ways that the master within is experienced? One important way that's emphasized in the Rosicrucian tradition is conscience. 
Meditation helps us to be sensitive to this voice of the inner guardian. At any time, including when we are experiencing challenges or feeling stressed, if we turn inward, a larger, more comprehensive and mature perspective can, can come forward. It may come forward to our subjective mind in a gentle, subtle way or with much energy and upliftment. Either way, there will be clarity and well being. This is experience is of the master within. These conveyances and experiences are central and invaluable throughout our daily lives. Our daily practice of meditation makes having such experiences much easier to happen. We know that we've had an encounter with the master within when we have clear, direct insights and answers to important questions. Now those insights and answers will be clothed in the impressions and impressions in the attire of the times that we live in or in times familiar with us. Because the outer objective mind and the outer subjective mind require things to be clothed in impressions to be understandable so we can have that whole concept in our entire being. Now the message may seem like a conveyance is not from us. And sometimes it may be from a master, yes. But in general, it is directly from us, deep within us. And when these impressions come in a very strong way, it can be described as illumination, the immediate and direct experience of God, the divine, the universal intelligence. One knows and one knows that one knows in a more definite and convincing manner than ever before, than anything that can come through the other objective senses. In other words, the experience is noetic. Mysticism is most fundamentally about direct experience of the divine, being the divine, with no intermediaries, such as a teacher or priest. The encounter with the master within is that direct experience. In order to live in a harmonious manner, we need to be attentive to the intimations of the master within, and importantly, act on this guidance. We thereby apply the law of the triangle. That is by being attentive and then acting. And then there can be the perfect manifestation, the third point of part of the harmonious living, setting uh, indicative of masterful living. Now, much of what is stressful in life can be let go of by the clear understanding and assessment of life matters given to us by the master within. Now maybe asked, is the master within our true nature that we're all seeking? And the short, short answer is yes, it is who we truly are. Indeed. <clears throat> this constitute this um, um, the conveyance of the master within can be surprising to the outer self. But at the same time, <clears throat> there is a clarity, a rightness and a deep familiarity. We are discovering our true nature. It is the greatest adventure that there is. And it informs all other adventures. We're discovering our unified being. The holy temple that is our physical body and outer nature is the dwelling place of the master within. We are here on the temple of the earth to learn in this manner. It may be asked, is its guidance infallible? Again, the answer is simply yes. However, we need to learn this matter for ourselves and be convinced of it. Often we subsequently do clearly see consequences of our actions in heeding or not heeding the guidance of the master within. In both instances, we learn the great value in being receptive to and acting 
on the guidance of the inner self. The conveyances of the master within have great purity, wellness, and goodwill for others, and clarity that distinguish them from impressions of our reasoning alone, our imagination, or simply what we have heard from others. Could also be asked, well, what is its relationship to spiritual teachers? Spiritual teachers are persons who have learned to heed the guidance of the master within. Their work, service, and example are invaluable, most particularly in guiding others to rely on the master within as they have done. The most important master in our lives is the master within. As an important part of self-mastery is our becoming more self-reliant, particularly more reliant on the inner self, the master within. The main emphasis of humanity's evolvement is on seeking the master within, not masters without. As aspirants collectively come into greater rapport with the master within, as we come into greater rapport with that inner self, the Christ consciousness or cosmic consciousness is increasingly known and active on earth. As we come into increasing rapport with the master within, we learn the lessons of life well. The mirror of the soul personality becomes polished so it can increasingly shine forth the divine. And we become the living radiant embodiment of our spiritual traditions and the Rosicrucian teachings. Maybe ask too, how do we increasingly realize it, express it, and be it. Meditation and the many exercises of the weekly monographs of the Rosicrucian studies bring, in, bring these things out in a systematic manner as we apply ourselves daily. As we take time daily to listen to the still small voice within and follow its guidance to much needed and masterful achievements for the well being of all. The sensitivity that we develop during meditation will help make the source or make clear the source is from the master within and not from some other less reliable source. The master within is always loving and of goodwill and does not work to the detriment of others. As we surrender and cooperate, the master within, it will increasingly become active in our lives and it will enrich and ennoble the outer self and will work as a whole. As the outer self and the inner self work together and, and convey messages to each other, a very efficient, caring, and loving, and highly meaningful way of life results. As we act through the virtues, that will draw the master within to be involved and inspire us to become, in our outer nature, more humble, kind, loving, caring, and discerning, not judgmental though, and to know how to act, including the, in the bigger decisions in our life. When we are spiritual and lofty in our motives, when, when we give, we then give expression to the inner self in this manner, to our finer and higher sentiments, we will radiate then a positive aura for the well being of all those we contact. Humanitarian activities, service, compassion, and thoughtfulness of others come about from urges from the master within, whether we, we realize it or not. Participation in such activities and ways of being in the world will maintain 
and build our rapport with the master within. Through the master within, as has been said, we will overcome every obstacle, go through every trial and test well, and find the happen happiness that comes with peace profound. At this time, I'll ask Karen to post in the chat the resources for the presentation as we do our conclusion. We have continued to explore how Rosicrucian laws and principles increase our well being and capacity for service. When we cooperate and work with the Master within, we are enriched, ennobled, fears drop away surprising strength comes forward to do what is right for ourselves and in service. We increasingly remember who we are. We move from belief to knowledge to wisdom, from per perceiving to conceiving, from confusion to clarity, from duality to unity, from wandering to knowing the way, tears roll down as tremendous love and compassion pours forth for all others. These things and much more are the way of life as we be increasingly realize and are the master within. Thank you.